Star Wars fans, Jedi Knights, and Ewoks, please welcome the man inside C-3PO, Anthony Daniels. Oh, what a beautiful welcome. Welcome to this remake of The Breakfast Club. This is the earliest I've ever been on stage in your life. Oh, oh say, say. easy girl, easy. <laughs> you haven't had breakfast, have you? It's like, I'm not going down there again, right. Okay, but the, the, the funny thing about this wonderful convention is, there, sir, would you stand up, please? Uh, and would you, just, if you would look at this camera here. Uh, no, sit down, not you. <laughs> Jesus. Um, can we just pan to uh, your left, please? Uh, we need the ju ah, okay. We're, g we're gonna pan to, we're gonna move to the, okay. these are all technical. There you go, there you go. Okay, I'll tell you when to stop. Uh, can, 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 you, um, can you stand like that? This should be Barbie and Ken. Is it, is it, no, it shouldn't be Barbie and Ken. This is perfectly good. <laughs> They're very good. Well, I think I'll go home now. I'll leave you to do, do the whole, whole thing. So, what is, uh, what is Star Wars about? Uh, it's about family. It's about family. <laughs> what do you think Star Wars is about? <laughs> I'm gonna die very shortly. <laughs> it's about family, it's about silence. You look like you know what, what it's about. It's about Jedi, who's, you're the guy with the hat. I saw you from over, the, yeah, yeah, enough, you had your three words, get over it. <laughs> um, oh, now look at you, what's it about? It's about space. It's about space, space, family, silence, space. Fam <laughs> what are you laughing at? You're wearing a Star Trek costume. <laughs> Live long, live long and prosper. <laughs> Honestly, they let anybody in here. It's ridiculous. I said Star Wars fans only. Okay. Okay, young lady, what, what is Star Wars about? C-3PO. C-3PO! And then, of course, we made all the other films. And then the other day, well, a year ago or whatever, suddenly they ring me up and would I be in an episode of Ahsoka? I was so thrilled to be asked and had the most wonderful time out there in Southern California in the most beautiful studio. And anybody see that fun, I mean, it's got to be the best episode of Ahsoka ever. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, because for those who haven't, um, 3PO comes in uh, there's this kind of courtroom scene going on, large courtroom, a, a kind of round thing open to the sky and everything, very beautiful set. Um, and 3PO comes in, and here I did something rather clever, which many filmmakers uh, do. Uh, Dave Filoni and I had a, a script conference on, on Zoom, and basically the scene was 3PO walks in, says something, and walks out, and I go, well, you know, I'm traveling all that way, jet lag, new costume, all that kind of thing. Can we make the scene a bit bigger? And so, <laughs> yeah, I'm not an actor for nothing. <laughs> I want more than those three words that I'm giving you. So we had enormous fun. And eventually, of course, we, we made the scene where 3PO comes in with a message from beloved uh, General Leia Organa. I mean, <laughs> they kept upping. I never quite, she started as a princess for heaven's sake and then became a, I don't know, whatever. But if you, if you ever watch that scene again, 3PO comes in at, at the back of the set on the, on the uh, doorway, and there are two guards. And uh, to begin with, they just put their uh, swords down or their spears, whatever they were, uh, and just walked his way. And then I had this total thing and came up with the line, which I totally stole from episode four from Sir Alec Guinness. Um, because they say, so if you listen carefully, you hear me go, you don't need to see my identification. 
And that was, that was a straight steal, and why not? Does anybody have a question of the only person in this room, in this world, in this galaxy, who's been in all of the Star Wars films? <laughs> Young lady, would you stand up? And I look at you, would you just walk towards me so that... And we're favouring camera two, uh, which yeah, it's got a pretty good lens on it. There we go. And what's your name? I, I'm Chloe. Chloe, how lovely. I'm Anthony. And how beautiful... You're wearing a frying pan? Yes. <laughs> OK. Did you have a question, Chloe? Um, yes. Um, I would like to know, what was your, like, favourite scene to film? throughout everything you've done in Star Wars? Favorite scene? Um, I got a couple of favorite scenes, really. Is this my close-up? I've got that, that's fine. What I, what I really hate about coming to a convention like this is where people come up to me and say, you know, uh, you, you, probably, you probably won't remember, but we met 30 years ago at a convention. <laughs> and, and, they, and they show me a picture of me and them and I don't look like that anymore. <laughs> so I'm taking your film away from you. Chloe, Chloe um, my favorite scene actually was, uh, to begin with, as many of you who've not read the book know that R2-D2 did not, uh, do sit down, Chloe, did not speak at all during, I'll feel safer on stage if that's okay, because there's one or two crazies here, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna come here. Um, you, if we go back to uh, Return of the Jedi, and it had become a surprise to me that after six months of working on the uh, costume back in 1975, 76, the first day's filming, uh, actually it was the second day, the first day I had no relationship with R2-D2. On the second day when I said something, there was, <laughs> There was nothing, there was no reply, nothing. Uh, it turned out that they'd forgotten or never cared to tell me that I would be talking to myself throughout the movie. <laughs> you don't realize this, because Ben Burt, six months later, put all those beeps and whistles in. So on, on that day, I remember the scene, it was where three was going, I've got to rest before I fall apart. My joints are almost frozen. What a desolate place this. And then, Wait a minute, where are you going? Because it was beetling off. Now, I'd been for two hours standing behind a sand dune, and they couldn't get this R2 unit to come up floorboards in the sand because the motors wouldn't work. And I am like, they're all in parka jackets and goggles and everything, and I'm bas basically wearing, like, you know, sardine can in my underwear. <laughs> yeah, underwear. And I was like shaking with cold, and the line which had been written months before, I'm almost frozen, too, too right. Um, and then, wait a minute, where are you going? And I think probably my brain stopped from cold because, and I stopped and said, George, it's kind of difficult talking to myself. Could you, could somebody make a noise um, when I finish my line so that I can logically go to my next line and reply to whatever it's meant to be doing. Could, could, could you make a noise? Could you like, could you like go beep? <laughs> or something? Oh, huh. sure. So we did it again, action. Wait a minute, where are you going? Oh, or beep. <laughs> I, I promise you, after that, I would write out the lines and do it all by myself. So, there was one time when we were going to the road to Jabba's palace, uh, which obviously wasn't there. Um, so we're in Death Valley, a tiny little thing. We'd been in a tiny aircraft. There was about six or eight of us there. And I'm rehearsing as they hid the camera in a glass face camera box, because that was going to be a matte painting. And I'm rehearsing, checking out the rocks and everything, and going, eh, Lando Calrissian never returned from this awful place. And suddenly, magically behind me, Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> and there was George squatting on his haunches. <laughs> Truly my favorite moment. <laughs> he never did it again. Somewhere in the middle there must be... Young lady, would you stand up? Yes, you. And possibly if you look at camera two, which is over there, and we'll... 
Yeah. Oh. He's drunk again. There you are. <laughs> okay, what is your quest? Ah, oh, you're going to have... You don't have a... You see, it's that trick. Hello, Mom. <laughs> okay, you're going to have to speak up. Uh, you know, uh, look at the camera. Yes, you're not an actress, are you? <laughs> Teasing you. What's your question? So, I noticed that the, um, the actual suit kind of looked like you. Was it designed that the, the suit looks like me? <laughs> not so much. But as you will read in the book, my first experience <laughs> of being at a film studio ever was to take most of my clothes off in a room with two builders there with buckets of plaster, which they then threw at my body. And it was so disgusting, I can't tell you. And eventually peeled it all away, put it in the middle, and poured plaster inside, made a model of my body standing there. It was awful. It was so embarrassing. But Liz Moore, the sculptor who created the shape that we recognized, uh, very quickly with modeling clay, built up the, the Art Deco uh, shape that you know, totally. So the body is actually mine. Yes, or mine. Um, but the face, you have to realize that 3PO's nose, uh, my nose is just about there in his face. There's no, not much room. But it was Liz who created uh, in 3D what Ralph McQuarrie had painted two-dimensionally, which is why I was in the movie. Because I loved something about 3PO's face touched my soul when I saw it, even before I read the script. So uh, it is my body inside. <laughs> The only trouble is that bodies tend to flex and give and, you know, squish a bit here, it comes out there. If you're encased in metal and fiberglass, it don't work so well. Mm. <laughs> you know that. Yeah, come on. Another question. Yes, young man in the pink shirt. We, um, go for it. Um, so, in many ways, C-3PO is like one of our narrators of Star Wars for the last almost 50 years. So I was just wondering if you could just reflect on that and what it means to you and your, at this point, generational legacy. Generational legacy. There's a thing. I, um, I was getting into trouble because I kept referring at Disney events that I was a heritage player. And they said, no, that generally heritage is now referred to uh, uh, concerning carrots or tomatoes. Um, the word was, I think you said legacy player. Legacy player. Yes, a legacy player. How old does that make me feel? <laughs> but curiously, and it's a very good question actually, because whose is the first voice you hear in a... St I didn't ask you to read the line, I just said, stand up. Take this microphone, and if you don't say the whole of that scene... <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> this is how it's done. First of all, you have to have the intention. Did you hear that? Did you see me hear that? No. Do you get it? This is called acting. So first of all, I heard something. Did you hear that? They shut down the main reactor. Well, now you can say it, can't you? <laughs> we'll be destroyed for sure. There'll be no escape for the princess this time. Was that better? 
What is interesting is in one of my original scripts, it says that, but there's one word changed or two. No, one word. Did you hear that? They shut down the main reactor. We'll be destroyed for sure. There'll be no escape for the captain this time. Oh. Yes, it was going to be Captain Antilles in the third draft of the script. But here we are. Here we are where we are at Megacon. And um, I didn't think anybody would be here today, actually, so I'm really quite chuffed that you turned up. It's very kind of you. And um, the, fact, the fact that some of you turned up, I think, excuse me, back in 1977, I'm suspecting you might have seen an early version. Some of you are old enough to have seen it originally. Thank you very much. Without you guys and the people you told about it and so on, none of us would be here today because there would have only been one Star Wars film and you would have gone on and watched stupid things like Star Trek and all that kind of thing. <laughs> and so it is actually because of you and your friends that have brought me and yourselves here today, and I hope you're making friends because genuinely I love the fact that Star Wars has made a global family around the world and you are very much a part of it and today you make me feel a part of it. So may the force be with you. <laughs>